This video is sponsored by Avail. Are you a HGV driver looking for a job? If so, then create and log into the Avail app and start looking for work. Want to know more? Then download the Avail app today. Morning. Morning everyone, it's a cold morning. It's a very cold morning. Oh, we are still in shorts. <laughs> there you go. This is literally so dark that you could go see the option. Morning. Morning. <laughs> Excited? Yeah. I can make people. To take me to work? No. <laughs> That's it, we're not going to include everything. <laughs> Right, thank you for the lift, girls. You're welcome. I'm off now. Have a good day. See you later. Bye. 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 You can drive my car room. What's she say? Let's uh, see your butt. <laughs> <laughs> right, have a good day. Bye. 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 Right, see you later. <laughs> thank you thank you for the lift morning everyone welcome to my channel my name is luke thank you very much for watching i do appreciate it as you can just see i got a lift into work this morning and uh, i shall tell you why momentarily but for first for starters let's get the engine on and let's do some checks yeah spilled some air up lights on Right, let's check the truck over. So we've got lights on the front, hazards are working, lovely jubbly. Lights down the side of the trailers, we're checking the wheels, make sure they're all inflated. Make sure uh, they're not hanging off, basically. Check the cluster. Lights were working. Last nice video, they wasn't. We got that fixed. No air leaks on the trailer, that's all fixed as well. Lovely. Let's have a look at the rear. rear of the trailer is all good lights on the back of the cab all good not that they're legally required and check down this side as well okay we've got a couple of side lights out here so we need to change them before we go Okay. I don't know if you saw that, but I just tapped it and they come on. <laughs> How strange. Yeah, I just tapped it and they come on, so it's a bit strange. We're keeping on that. But we're about to change them. We've got spare bulbs. Yeah, I got spare bulbs in there which I was gonna use. And uh got my screwdriver kit, but yeah, they're working now, so that's good. Carry on with the chucks. All the tyres look okay, airlines are on. It's all looking gravy, baby. Okay, daily checks are done. We're going to jump in the truck now and we're going to crack on uh, to our destination. I shall talk to you about where we're going in a second. Okay, so we're in the truck now. Like I said, daily checks have all been done. It is minus one and a half degrees out there, according to my dash. And um, I'm in shorts. <laughs> lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, so today we have planned is two deliveries. Today is a Tuesday. We've got two deliveries to make, one in Woking and one in Oxford. Both deliveries are coming from South Cerny. We're gonna get loaded with roofing tiles. Uh, so that's where we're on our way to now. We're on our way to South Australia to go get loaded with roof tiles. We should be there before seven o'clock, so that's good. Um, hopefully we can get loaded relatively quickly and go do the first delivery. But yes, my wife and kids had to bring me into work this morning. 
Um, unfortunately, our Nissan broke down a couple of weeks ago. We went to the to the recycling centre to recycle some stuff. Obviously, we're moving house, blah, 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 you know, we're trying to declutter a little bit. So we went to the recycling plant in the Nissan. It's a seven-seater, so we put the seats down, loads of room. Turn the engine off to provide our ID, because obviously, save with CO2 emissions and all that. And when I went to restart the engine, nothing at all, completely dead. We thought it was battery to begin with. Um, but no, it just didn't, didn't want to start whatsoever. So we called our recovery guy out. Dude, come on. We called our recovery guy out and uh, he come and got it so that uh, it started at least. But uh, as soon as we turned the engine off again, he said it would start again. So we got it home and uh, yeah, we just going to start it again and uh, it, it didn't start again, basically. I say our recovery guy, by our recovery guy, I mean um, our breakdown cover. <laughs> so we didn't know the guy. Our actual guy then, our mechanic, who, uh, his name's Joe, he watches some of my videos, or his kids does, so shout out to Joe and his, and his children. Uh, he then come over and he tried to temporarily fix it, uh, well, tried to permanently fix it, I should say, but hasn't been able to uh, locate the fault completely. He got it so that it was starting again, um, but for some reason, every time you turn the engine off, uh, you can't start it again for, he said, a minute. I've done some testing, and it turns out it's 20 seconds is the sweet spot. After 20 seconds, it would start. So, okay, no problem, no problem. So we booked it in with Nissan, uh, and it's due to be with Nissan in a couple of weeks' time, I think, because it's quite a, quite a long wait before we can get it into Nissan. But cool, no problem. So we haven't been dri driving it. It don't get driven much anyway during the week. But today, my wife needs to take my eldest daughter uh, to Oxford Hospital. Uh, so the plan was, obviously, she'd take the Nissan, like, or she can take my Honda, and I'd take the Nissan to work. It doesn't matter, one or the other. So last night, I got home and I said, let's go out to the Nissan, let's just make sure it's all working okay. Don't know why I said it, but we did it. I said, let's just go and check it. And good job I did, because we went to start it. It doesn't want to start. It does sound like a dead battery now. So I think, and Joe, the mechanic, he doesn't know this because um, he was working when he left it off with us. But I think something is still drawing the power from the battery. So it, it's not 100% at all. So it's not, it's not fixed. So... Hopefully Nissan can look at it and fix it for us. We, well, I've just been and bought a uh, battery power pack because two things. Firstly, we're going to, we want to get a power bank anyway because we're going to Silverstone, uh, Formula One in July. So we've already said that we need to get uh, an extra power bank. But also we got jump leads, but I wouldn't mind a jump pack for the car. So I had a look on Amazon yesterday, 134 quid. There's like this little jump pack thing. Uh, with crocodile clips to put on your engine and uh, yeah, starts your car basically. And uh, you can also use it as an emergency power kit with USB with USB um, socket on the end. So um, yeah, we'll keep that in the car and that'll come in handy, especially when we go on holiday and stuff in the future. We can put it in the Honda as well. So yeah, that's the situation. My wife's brought me to work today because she needs a car to get to uh, Oxford Hospital for my daughter and uh, currently my Honda is the only car that's working. <laughs> Two cars and it's just sod's law that it's all, it's all gone kaput, kaput. So yes, thank you to the wife and kids for getting up and taking me to work in the morning. My wife also did say that on my video, can I please mention that she used to take me to work every morning. She wants everybody to know that she's a superstar. <laughs> so yeah, big thanks to my wife. Um, yeah, very grateful. Okay, this is the part of the video where we talk about the Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. I promise you, if you want to know anything regarding HTVs or, or working hours or anything like that, then you need to purchase this book because everything is in it. Uh, and if you are already a HTV driver and you think you already know about all this sort of stuff, buy it anyway because it's going to refine your existing skills. The Essential New Truckers Handbook by Malcolm Green. Link in the description down below. Go buy yourself a copy now. So, as I mentioned, first drop is in Woking. We're going to all type roofing in Woking, which I believe is actually SIG roofing. I think I've, I've been there before. I've stayed there before, actually. On the, it's on Questral Way in Woking. I believe it's definitely SIG roofing, and I believe I delivered to that place, that SIG roofing, for all type. I believe. So, we'll see that when we get there later. And then we'll come back, reload again, and we're going to Oxford. So, there is actually a small chance that we might actually see my wife and kids in Oxford. Uh, or they might pass me at some point, maybe. Who knows? They, pro they probably won't, but there is a very small chance they will, because there's only one main road to Oxford, and that's the A420. I'm due to be there about one-ish, I, I think. 
they're going to be there for 10-ish, but they could be coming back around 2-ish, and I could be coming back around 2-ish. So, yeah, we might we might see each other on the way back. Who knows? <laughs> right, let's crack on to South Cerny. I'll see you once we're loaded. See you in a bit. Right. Shout out to Andy, just leaving. Very nice chap. I talk to him a lot. If I see him on the road, he works for Redlands, watches my videos, and uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. I do appreciate it. Right, let's get cracker lack in, as I say. Seatbelt on. We're loaded and we are strapped up. Got to go to Woken. Andy has just said as well that this place, I've, I've been, so I, I said earlier, I think it was the SIG roofing, because I've definitely delivered to SIG roofing before. Uh, but Andy's saying it isn't SIG roofing, it's actually a couple of doors down from SIG roofing, and it's quite an awkward reverse in, so it'd be interesting to get that reverse in on camera. I was also a couple of doors down from, a couple of doors down, <laughs> I got loaded with uh, like metal and aluminium before as well. And um, it went to uh, it went to RAF Bryce Norton. It was like specialised platform uh, platforms to get onto the aeroplanes or something like standing platforms. Uh, and I collected that from like the same place, but just down a bit further down on the right hand side. And that was a reverse in from the road jobby as well. So I do believe it is quite tight, but we will see obviously when we get there. This place can be a nightmare to get out sometimes if it's busy. Right, he's gone. Barry is still up. This is good. Can we get out in one go? Clear right. Clear left. We can get out in one go. Lovely. So yeah, we're going to crack on to Woking. It's a two hour drive to get there. Me and Andy were just talking about Formula 1 teams as well, because he's a big F1 fan as well. Uh, and obviously McLaren are based in Woking, so I think we may pass McLaren at some point today. Potentially, I can't remember exactly if we do or not. We'll see, we'll see. But yeah, I'm going to crack on. I will see you in a little while. See you in a bit. Right, you join me in Woking. Got some uh, temporary traffic lights here. We're still about three miles away from our delivery point. Yeah, that's it, mate. You just walk out. I know like this is your workplace, but you can't just walk out in front of a truck. Jesus. Sorry. <laughs> like, I know he's working and all that, but he just literally just walked out. Um, yes, we're in Woking. We're still about three miles away, but I am trying to include a little bit more driving in my videos if possible. So that is what I'm doing. I don't remember coming in this way last time. I don't know if I've coming the wrong way or not. I know we definitely won't be passing McLaren F1 team like I mentioned earlier because to do that you've got to come in from the M25 which we're not doing. So yeah we won't be going that way but uh, yeah we've come this way. I think I just made a left turn back there off camera and I do remember doing that once before so maybe I have come up here. I don't know maybe I've just forgotten but nonetheless we'll get there eventually. Uh, so the person I was talking to said that it was quite tight. That truck is too far out for me to actually get past it. I think. Let's see if I can let him out. That van is a bit of a nightmare, isn't it? You could have let the lorry go first before turning. Let the lorry driver out. I would appreciate it. Uh, so yeah, the, the lorry driver I was talking to earlier, Andy, he said that uh, it can be quite tight to get in, so hopefully we can get in okay. We'll get it on camera, if we can. Where are you going? You're not indicating, but there's a car coming so I can go. That was my blocker. Straight over this one. Bump, bump, bump. So yeah, hopefully we can get in okay. I am starting to be a little bit concerned with regards to times because it's it's taken well just over two hours to get here uh it's going to take obviously just over two hours to get back as well so that's going to put us on assuming we're here for an hour but don't want to be here any more than an hour that's going to be one o'clock by the time we're back in south Cerny. then it could be an hour to load so that's two o'clock uh 
which don't give me much time to get to Oxford before four o'clock, when most places don't take deliveries after. So, yeah. We're starting to run out of time for the Oxford delivery, but we've got to get it off because today's our last day. We're off tomorrow. Tomorrow's Wednesday, and I'm off work. Uh, you might remember a few videos ago I said that my grandpa died. Well, uh, tomorrow's his funeral, so, yeah. Kind of need tomorrow off. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I could run in in the morning, do the delivery and then run in in the morning. But, oh, actually, think about it, that would be... That would be pushing it as well, to be fair. I think the funeral is around midday, lunchtime. That could be pushing it. So, yeah, we need to get off today, <laughs> ideally. So, we'll try our best. <clears throat> we'll probably just head there anyway and just see if they can get it off. If not, then just drive back. Once I've completed this job on the app, I can clear it, then look up the next job and see if there's any special instructions. Like, there are special instructions for this one, no deliveries after two o'clock. Uh, if that's the case for Oxford as well, then yeah, there's just no chance it's gonna be made in time. So, we will see. We'll see. Right, only a mile and a half away now. So yeah, I've done a night out before. I think a couple of nights out down here, actually. There's no yellow lines, it's a dead end down here. So you can come down here, find somewhere to spin round, come back up and you can pretty much park all the way along down here. There's a couple of yellow lines here, but then there's a gap again where the rest of the vehicles are. So that's pretty good. Uh, it's also a little bit snug around here for space. I may have to park up and have a walk down, or I can potentially just drive down and then uh, reverse back if needed. have a look yeah you can spin around in this bit here and go back out if you need to bit of a puddle here oh, I can't quite see uh, I think we can go straight down let's have a look anyway we could I think we could park up on the left temporarily we just don't want to block any uh, lorries because lorries want to go in here on the left Yeah, we've got to get in there. Looks like it could be okay. <clears throat> got to quickly see if we can find someone. All right, let me see if I can quickly find someone before Lorry comes or wants to get out. All right, mate. Got a delivery for you. Four load. Yeah, Arctic. Yeah. Do you want me to reverse in now while I'm on the road, or...? Uh, yeah, you can do, yeah. Yeah, I'll reverse in. Cheers, mate. Okay, I think I, I think it was this one I've actually been in before, you know? I think something's parked behind me. Yeah, cars just parked behind me. Noise. Might have to go on the curb a little bit just to swing it in. It's easy enough. It's getting out, which is gonna be the hard, the hard bit. Ugh. You can't see yet, but on my left-hand side, there is a, uh, a car, which is the, uh, well, it's gonna be right where I need to be, basically, to get on out. Mind the gate on the left. Yeah, you should be able to just about see the car now on the left-hand side. And uh, could be tight getting out, but we'll try our best. Right, let's get this off. See you in a bit. Right, so we're unloading now. Straps are off. Corner boards are off. We're good to go. We're well and truly blocked in, but never mind. <laughs> just asked the best way of getting out. So apparently if we come out of here and turn right, can't go in there because that's uh, no entry. It's out only. 
But he said if you come down here, we can apparently go around to the right and then reverse in to Royal Mail. And then we can get out. So I'm just gonna have a quick look. It was this place here I did, uh, picked up from so, uh, to do the uh, Bryce Norton stuff. But yeah, I think just nose it down there, reverse it back. Bit of a blind side, but it should be okay. Cool, at least now we know. At least now we know. Right, we've been stationary for 23 minutes. That ain't bad, tipped in 23 minutes. We need to put in our sat nav that we're going back. Probably should have done that while I was waiting. <laughs> uh, not Lake 81, yeah. Go there, lovely. Right, let's try and get out of here. Clear to the right, clear to the left. Matey Boy was just saying that uh, he's told other lorry drivers before to do what I'm about to do. And then uh, they've ended up going in the wrong way. Like they've gone in the exit. <laughs> naughty, naughty. Go in here. So, like I said, it is a blind turn. So it's not the easiest. But we can do it. I just don't want to hit anything. <laughs> we've got a car on our right now, so we've got to let the car through. This car is wanting to get where I am by the looks of it. Thank you very much. Lovely, right, we're out. So we're gonna head back. Uh, hopefully we'll be back about 12 o'clock, but we do need to get a break in as well when we're there. Get loaded and have a break. And then we can crack on to Oxford. That is the plan. Let this car through, coming around the corner. Oh, you're indicating. Not going to wait forever. I thought he was going to be down a bit quicker than that. Thank you. So yeah, um, in terms of being tipped quickly, that is exactly what we wanted. Uh, be tipped 23 minutes. That's, uh, that's awesome. Lovely. So now we go straight back get loaded, uh, have a break, and then uh, crack on from there, basically. So I'll see you in a little while. See you in a bit. Hey, we're in South Cerny. We're just waiting to be let in to be loaded. Uh, here we go. We, do, <laughs> we just had a problem with our hazards. Uh, they weren't turning on for some reason. Uh, so I got into the fuse, fuse box down there. They wouldn't let us in before we sort stuff out. There's one fuse. I might be able to put a picture on this if I, if I remember. There's one fuse that's labelled as uh, 5A, uh, but I had a look and had a blue one in, which is 15A. Um, so I put another 15 in, that one blew instantly, straight away. Uh, so I then put a 30A in, which is a green one, and that worked absolutely fine. Apologies if my nose is all runny. I've got a bit of a cold, like I said, so. <laughs> my apologies. Try not to get any down shots like that. Try, try and do that, hello. <laughs> Um, so yeah, fixed the uh, the fuse, we've got the pliers out and everything, Mr. Technical. Even had uh, some screwdrivers out, because there's, if you, if you look carefully at the fuse box, there's like screws at the top and you can undo them and the fuse box folds down and there's more behind it. So uh, so yeah, just ready to be loaded, um, but that did cost us 15 minutes or so trying to fix that, so uh, I was saying earlier, we're tight for time. We're still tight for time. I got our destination put in the sat-nav already. If we leave now, half past one, we're going to be here at the very least half an hour because we need to get half an hour break in because um, we're on four hours driving, I think. Three hours and 50. So we've only got 40 minutes of drive time, so we can't get there. So the aim is to get loaded, get strapped up, have half an hour break, or go down the road and have half an hour break. 
at the earliest, we're looking at three o'clock, I think. Right, we've got to sit in the passenger seat anyway while they load us, or on the bunk. And I, obviously, I've cleared this area up while I was sorting this out, so I might as well sit in the passenger seat. Um, so yeah, it was, which one was it? This one. This one is supposed to be a 5A. There we go. But when you correspond that image to the fuse box, it's this one here. Uh, it did have a, a 5 in it. So, uh, well, no, sorry, it did have a, it had a 15 in it. So I swapped it for another 15, that blew instantly. So I put a 30 in. But if I take that out now, with my pliers, if you listen to the ticking, that's the uh, the hazards. Put that back in. So do you hear that? The uh, the hazard stopped. I'll do it again. Pull this green one. Hazards have stopped. No hazards. <laughs> Put it back in. There we go. Hazards are working. Okay, we are loaded. Truck is over over there. There it is. <laughs> um, we're just uh, just chilling. We're on break now, so just use the toilet facilities. And uh, yeah, just chilling. Wife's finished at the hospital with uh, with my daughter. Nothing mega. It was just uh, I don't know what that building is. It was just um, she's not walking straight or something. So just want to check her legs out, but it's all, it's all looking good. So that's all good. It's like a tiny house. How strange. I've only just seen this. <laughs> What's that about? Uh, this production complex was designed and built by Shepherd Building Services Limited in association with Redland uh, Roof Tiles Limited Technical Division 1983. So maybe this was made just to show off their tiles. We're at a roof slate place, aren't we? So that makes sense, just so you can see it. There's nothing inside. That makes sense. It's literally just a demo. It's pretty cool. That is a cool way to advertise it, isn't it? Nice. Anyway, let's walk back to the truck. Break time's nearly over. What I'm probably going to do is just, um, once my break's over, I'm just probably just going to crack on. So, uh, next time you see me, we'll be in Oxford. See you in a bit. Stay green, stay green, stay green, stay green, stay green, stay green. Yes! Hello, everyone. We're in Oxford. Uh, we just come off the A420, A34 is to the left of us and to the right of us. We're going straight on into Botley. And down here. Uh, we want to go left. Do I need this left lane? No, we can go left to middle lane. Oh, good okay. And we're just around the corner. We're only a mile and a half away from where we need to be. Now, looking on the map before I left, this particular place looks like Looks like I'm going to have to park up on the road. It don't look very... Like there's a lot of room, to be honest with you. I'm going to take up both lanes just in case. Um, there's like a cycle lane on the path and everything. Yeah, we made that. Um, so yeah, it doesn't look like there's an awful lot of room. And then it looks like we've just got to sort of go forward and re sort of reverse back, I think. Uh, sort of parallel park, if you like, outside their premises. That's what it looks like. I've uh, never been to this one before, so we'll find out. There is apparently a weight limit down here. Oops. My sat-nav says I'm in, gonna go in a weight limit. <laughs> we are turning right in half a mile. Uh, yeah, weight limit, except for loading. Uh, we are delivering, and this is the only way in. Um, unless we come in from the other way, but again, it's still gonna be a weight limit, this particular place. So, we're okay, as far as I'm concerned. The only way in it's a dead end industrial estate half a mile down this road i would say that uh, i need access and i will be loading well unloading but same thing after you cyclist no stopping ah so yeah there's a sign saying no stopping but we need to stop outside my delivery point there's also a school down here i swear this is the only way in I'm sure this is the only way in. It's like a little industrial estate. No stop or stop in Monday to Saturday, 7.30 to 9 a.m. Ah, oh, okay, it's just the morning because of the score. 
seven thirty to nine thirty. I didn't read the second line though. I guess it's going to be sort of two thirty to three thirty. I guess what time we're arriving? Two twenty-five. <laughs> we should be okay. Although there could be some traffic coming back out. Go down to the right. Zebra crossing. Anything coming around? No, all clear. Okay, it doesn't look too busy down here, so that's good. I thought it was going to be a bit busier. But it doesn't look too bad. We've got a park just here on the left. Where it says SIG roofing. I'll put the hazards on now. Well, where the lorry is. <laughs> so we do have one lorry in there. Just flash him, let him know that I am for him. I don't think that's actually a SIG guy. So let's go and have a wander, see what they say. I think this motorcyclist has taken a photo of me. I could get more over to the left, but then vehicles can't pass on the left. I mean, it's a bit awkward. Ugh, more on the left, vehicles can't get past. I got option, no option other than what I'm doing. Both, as I am, both vehicles and cyclists can still get past me. I'm pretty sure he just took a photo of me. I may be wrong. But yeah, I think he's, well, yeah, is he taking a photo of the building now, potentially? I think so. I'm getting a little bit annoyed because the lorry driver said it'd be two minutes and he's, wow, well, he's been like five minutes. And if he said five minutes, I would have started unstrapping and stayed where I was. It's only because he said two minutes that I've moved. Is the lorry coming out? I don't know if he's coming out down here or not. All right, I think we can start moving in now, I think. We've got a lorry coming down. I'm going to intrude onto his lane if I carry on. Lovely. And we're going in. We do have someone watching us back. See him now, though. Not got a lot of wiggle room. Try and get it in the best we can. Is that right? Perfect. Brilliant. Perfect. I'll take that. <laughs> right, let's get this uh, unstrapped, offloaded. And then we can crack on back to the yard. See you in a bit. We've also got two forklifters on us, so it shouldn't take too long to actually get us offloaded. I reckon we'll be out of here by about three o'clock. Lovely. Ooh. What's happened? I don't see any foot smoke or anything. <coughs> Let's just turn around. Strange. Yeah, that fire engine just spun round and gone again, so hopefully nothing to worry about. Right, we are tipped. We're just waiting to get out. We've got a van blocking our way. Something interesting just happened just now. Um, so these vans are parked on the cycle lane. because so obviously I'm taking up the whole of this space. And a cyclist come down, an old man, literally just threw the cones over. I uh, wish I got it on video. But he just threw them over. One of these guys said, uh, are you going to pick that up, mate? He goes, no, I think that's your job. <laughs> um, yeah, rude, arrogant cyclists. All of them. Wow, well, nah, that's, can't say all of them. They're not all, uh, they're not all bad. A lot of them are. Now, is anyone watching me out? That's the thing. 
I don't think anyone will be. Just going to be careful, make sure there's no one on our left. I haven't got my seatbelt on yet because I am concentrating on the road and I'm doing a manoeuvre. Lovely. I think we're clear. We're clear. Right, I can put my seatbelt on quickly now. Lovely. Yeah, so we're going to crack on. I'd, like I said, I do think at some point my wife is... Um, Potentially going to overtake me. I think. Uh, I think. Well, I think it's going to be tight. <laughs> it's going to be tight because uh, my car's got a tracker on, so I can see where it is. And just before I left, she uh, she was approaching the A420 junction, which is only five minutes up the road for us. So uh, yeah, she's not going to be either far behind or in front. There's that fire engine I saw. Look. Don't see any fire anywhere. Strange. Strange. Okay, take a left at these lights. Oh, these look quite sharp. I'm going to have to get in the right-hand side lane to make the left turn. Full shell. Full shell. That looks quite tight. Truck turning left. Can you hear that? I think you can hear that. These cars need to move before I can go. That's for sure. With these pedestrians right on the left. Cyclists, which has quite clearly gone for a red light. Bloody cyclists, man. Lovely, 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 lovely. He just gone through another red light. I can't. That bus has gone for a red light. Bloody hell, mate. <laughs> He's looking at me like, oh my God, what have I done? I don't think he realises. He just gone... Well, he does realise, but... Um, yeah. <laughs> I think he shot me went for a red light. His face was like... <gasps> Oops. Honestly, people don't pay too much attention, do they? Ugh. <laughs> okay, so I can see my wife on the tracker and she's just around the corner. Um, so I said to her, if you meet me in B&Q, or wait in B&Q, um, when I go past, you can come past us. And she's actually at the lights, I can see on the tracker. These lights are going to change, but she is waiting at these lights on the right-hand side. If they stay green, she's going to see me go past. Mind you, she is pretty blind. <laughs> I see her. <laughs> she <laughs> she got to turn around. That's my wife. <laughs> I don't know where she's turning around. She's flapping, I think. Just don't hit my car. I, honestly, if I smash my car up, completely fine. I'm fine with it. I did it. If my wife smashes my car up, I will go mental. I know I will. I will never forgive her for smashing my car up. <laughs> and she knows this. So she, she loves driving my car, but is also petrified of smashing it up. I don't know where she is. She'll overtake us at some point on the dual cadre. <laughs> okay, so um, I can see on the tracker she's coming up behind me. She's about 200 yards behind me, I'd say. <laughs> I, I don't know why, it's just so exciting. I don't, know, I don't know whether I'm more excited that my wife is overtaking me or whether my car is overtaking me. I think I'm more excited to see my car, not gonna lie. I think it's more my car. 
say, uh... <laughs> that's my wife. That's my wife. More importantly, that's my car. And my kids. My kids are in that car. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm heading back to the yard now. Um, so I'm going to crack on, and I will see you there. If you look in the far left, you'll see my wife turning left, because... Um, she just phoned me up saying that she's run out of fuel. <laughs> the fuel lights come on. That had half a tank this morning. That car. She's burned all that fuel. I got a motorcyclist on the left hand side. You better be going left. Yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so there she is in there. That's <laughs> my wife. Sorry, that's my car. That's my car. Um, yeah, so um, she's gone to fill it with fuel. Just had to tell her on the phone, I said, make sure you put 99 in. That car takes 99 Supreme Fuel and only 99 Supreme Fuel. I'm in the wrong lane. I need to go over. I need to get in the right side lane. For some reason, I thought we were going left at this roundabout. We're not we're going right. Of course we are. I don't know why, but I just thought we were going up a junction on the left. But no, we're going down a junction on the right. Or up a junction on the right, depending on how you look at it. So, um... Yes, we are done for the day. Just got to take this truck back to the yard now. Once we get back to the yard, I've got to make it safe for tilt because he's actually got a six-week inspection tomorrow while I'm off. And um, I've got to unhitch the trailer as well, so obviously he can have the inspection. So, yeah, that's what i got to do when I get back to the yard. Make, make it safe for tilt and... Uh, <coughs> make it safe for tilt and... Uh, Drop the trailer. That's what I've got to do. Oh, we've got a van here, look now. You're in the wrong lane, mate. He just put his hand out at me like I'm in the wrong lane. You're in the wrong lane. Idiot. See, if I didn't spot that down there then on my blind side, could have hit it. Never mind. Never mind. We shall, uh, Go to the yard, drop the trailer, make the cab safe for tilt, take the card out. And uh, yeah, like I said earlier, t tomorrow I've got off, I've got my uh, my granddad's funeral tomorrow. So, um, years, day off, so I can attend that. It's a bit of a shame that my back is uh, in still because uh, I was due to carry his coffin, same as I did for my nan. Uh, my nan's coffin, my, my nan did not weigh a lot at all. She was very, very short, thin, fragile. But, oh my gosh, the coffin, they chose like an, I think it was oak, pure oak coffin. They went all out. And um, it weighed an absolute ton. And not being funny, my, my grandpa, there he is, thin. He was quite tall, like myself, actually. And... Uh, I, he's, he's obviously going to be heavier than my nan and I knew my nan's box was very very heavy and at the moment my back is in such a way that I just know I'm not going to be able to carry the coffin without being in quite a lot of pain and I don't want to drop my cramp so I have said that I probably won't carry him uh, not only that I got a cold I'm probably just going to rock up and uh, try not to get too close to anyone to infect him with my coldness because <laughs> that's the last thing I want to do is my Doritos made an appearance? Yeah. I've got Doritos behind me, look, <laughs> unopened. Things like that I need to go and store away so um, when the cabs tilt, they uh, don't fall all over the place. That's what I need to do. So, yeah, anyway, that's going to be it for me. No point waiting until we get to the yard because uh, you've seen the yard loads of times. <laughs> but thank you very much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. Um, today we went to Woking, reversed in. I was told it was quite a tight reverse, but we got in in one go, which was pretty good. And then uh, just recently just done a delivery to Oxford, and again, got in there okay as well, no problem. I like, I don't mean to be big-headed, but I do consider myself a relatively good reversal. Reversal? Reverse. Reverser. I seem to do quite well at reversing. I kind of like the challenging reverses, if I'm honest. Uh, makes me feel good. I get anxious, but then I feel really good afterwards that I achieved it. Um, 
and I, it's probably one of the questions I get asked the most, to be honest, is how do you get good at reversing? And to some extent, you either are or you aren't, but also, to some extent, the more you do it, the better you're going to be in it. So just keep practicing. I would recommend that if you have a yard with plenty of space, pop down on the weekend and just practice doing some reverse maneuvers. Obviously, you put your tacker card in, you can't do it without your card in. Just pop on down and do some reverse maneuvers. I know I used to when I first started. 100% I used to go down the yard on the weekend. Uh, go wash my lorry, practice doing some little reverse maneuvers where it's quiet, there's no one around watching. You just, you know, you get to learn a little bit, don't you? Like you just gain experience. So, yeah, that's my tip. If you need to get good at reversing, just practice. <laughs> As with anything, really, in it, let's be honest. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. Until next time, drive safe, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. See you later. Bye bye.